everything I say is alleged, my opinion, and for entertainment purposes only. Let's get into this recap of the interview that Kenya Moore did down to the Carlos King's podcast. It was uh, interesting, especially the part where she talked about her mom. So let's get into it. So Carlos, let it be known and let it let Kenya know that Portia and Kenya saved the franchise. They talk about Kenya before the housewives and her being from Detroit. Kenya speaks about when her mother said that she will dog her out for the rest of her life because she pre-recorded a conversation that she wanted her mother to listen to, hoping that her mom would acknowledge her. Her mother let her know that I don't have a daughter and her mother kept denying that she ever had a daughter, which caused Kenya to form a thick skin and made a decision that she's going to show her mother better than she can tell her, despite her mother trying to destroy her. Now, I don't know what it's like to be denied a mother, but I am sure that no matter how much Kenya tries to heal from her mother denying her, that has got to be the, the sorest spot in her soul and in her heart. And it's unfortunate. And I'm sure that triggers abandonment issues for her. So Carlos asked Kenya, do you think your mother suffered from mental issues? Um, Kenya said definitely her mother suffered from mental illness and wants to know why her mother would look her in the eyes and say she never had her. Child, again, I, I know that has to be tough. Um, Kenya speaks about her aunt Lori getting the heat, you know, for telling Kenya to back off of her mother. Kenya says she felt like a, no one ever fought for her as a child. And she got really emotional about that. And that's understood. Carlos said that Kenya is the most misunderstood reality star. They said that we don't see what happens to her with people poking, but they only get the reaction. Kenya credits her grandmother for speaking life into her, letting her know that she's not only beautiful, but she's smart. And her grandmother created a fighter in her. Carlos brings up colorism and how people respond to chocolate girls. Kenya says she has seen a lot of colorism on these shows. It's not a perception. It's not made up and it's not a lie. It's real. Kenya said she directed Twa with Will Packer and wants to know why he hasn't hired her again. That leaves a big question. Interesting. Well, in my opinion, and she maybe she'll say it's the edits, but when Kenya is in charge of something, i.e. that time they went down to the to build the houses, she was very nasty to everybody, okay? Projects and can be a little nasty and disrespectful. I mean, we've seen it on TV. So, anyway. Kenya says she moved from Hollywood because she felt like she was stagnant and wanted to do something different. So it brought her to Atlanta to get on reality TV. She said she didn't know anything about reality TV, but Real Housewives of Atlanta was the show that everybody wanted to be on, including her. OK, so she started filming with Miss Lawrence. She said she did not think Real Housewives of Atlanta would work. She said she barely saw the show. Excuse me. She said she saw the show, thought it was funny, said she did not like a lot of the characters. And she basically said she didn't like Nene because she was loud and brash. But when she started filming with her and they had dinner, she got to like her. She said, you have to get to know a person. They then talked about Real Housewives of Atlanta being like an elite membership. But now it's like a playground and anyone can come on the show. Kenya said you had to earn your right to be on this show when she got into the reality space. We found out that Kenya was doing Real Housewives of Atlanta for free. So child, she was filming for free. Trying to get on the show, if you ask me. But she threatened to leave and they could not use her footage if she was not going to get paid. And I ain't mad at her for that, okay? She said she don't have no problem leaving the situation if it ain't working for her. It's not about the money for her. That's a little of a contradiction, but okay. But I do understand, like, you doing all this work for free. Giving this entertainment for free. And ain't no compensation. All right, anyway. Kenya feels like the ladies coming on the show now are fans of the show. Low key, Kenya, when you came on the show, it kind of felt like you was a fan too. And that's just oh, in my Carlos opinion. Carlos again brings up that Kenya and Portia uh, saving the show. Kenya said her and Portia banter back and forth, 
was filmed because the ladies went on a strike against Kim Zosiak and her shenanigans and her receiving preferential treatment. Kenya reveals that she had lunch with Portia before her event and things were fine. But at the event, she saw little things that basically annoyed her, like her getting a Chanel bag from her husband. She said it was not Portia uh, messing up her title as Miss America because people mess it up all the time. It was the whatever girl and Kenya was offended and felt like Portia was trying to embarrass her. Well, if people get it mixed up all the time, why get offended? I'm not understanding. And I remember that episode and you just came off as a mean girl. It was almost like I could do this better. Why is she here? And then uh, Kenya basically said she didn't take the Portia because she wasn't intelligent enough for her. Child, I can't. So season five, Kenya was not in a good space. Kenya said that it appeared that she was hurting a young black girl. You know, that episode where she was at the Cynthia Bailey and they was auditioning models. And Kenya went off on the young lady. Um, but Kenya... It came off that way. It looked like you were looking for a moment on this show. It was really bad because you could have pulled that young lady to the side and had a conversation as a firm of Miss America. OK, she said they have they have to tell the story how it happened. And for me, I was like, well, this was the opportunity for you to tell us what really happened and how you uh, how we missed the point of what really happened. Because I really would like to know because it was very embarrassing for you to just keep yelling out at that young lady. OK, and I feel like you missed the opportunity to tell us right here what it was really about and that it wasn't about the young lady. But you missed that opportunity. Season six, Kenya was not going to return. And I'm assuming after the backlash she got from talking to that young lady like that. But whatever Carlos asked her which of the girls or the ladies gave her a run for the money Kenya said of course Nene gave her a run for her money Kenya gives Nene her props for holding uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta up and said she missed Nene on the show she said she was a force to be reckoned with when it comes to this show Carlos said Kenya does not get fair treatment and talks about why Kenya is never seated at the lead in the reunions so we find out that the seating goes by the star of the show and not necessarily the storylines. Oh, this is what got me. Kenya said, where are my spinoffs? Now, let's see if people say she jealous of Candy like they did with Nene. Because she just said the same thing. Where's my spinoffs? Because her and Nene feel like, you know, they were being blocked, I'm assuming. Kenya felt like she contributed a lot to this show and felt like she wasn't given the preferential treatment like some people were. Now, I just had a quick thought. I wonder if Kenya going to be a part of the lawsuit that's going on with NBC. Oh, wait a minute. I wonder if Nene having this interview with Carlos jumped. Because so, you notice that the big boom came out after Nene did her interview. With her suing the network and NBC and Andy Cohen. Interesting. Interesting. That's just. Thought. Kenya said she feels like she was punished because she married Mark off camera. And she said she understood. But, you know, because they invested a lot in her. And then she goes and get married, you know, off camera. Kenya felt that bringing Mark on the show would have been a kiss of death for their marriage. Uh, I really feel like it wasn't even a show. I don't think the man liked you. Just in my opinion. I think he was using you. But OK. But Mark also didn't want to be on camera, so that was very, very challenging. Kenya speaks about making the first move when she met Mark. Kenya said Mark wants to undo her rights when it comes to Brooklyn being on a TV show because he's filming a reality show. Carlos wanted to know if the show ruined her marriage. Kenya said Mark ruined their marriage, not the show. And she's a good wife and will be a good wife to the next man. So Kenya speaks about, you know, the rumor that went around about her paying men to come on the show. Um, listen, I don't think she paid for men. It just looked like, you know, she picked the wrong men, which we all have done in this daggone lifetime. OK, but Kenya it definitely looked like, you know, or they made it seem like you were looking for a man just to do the show. OK, that's what it looked like. 
So they end the show with Carlos saying that there were rumors about Kenya wanting to give Apollo fellatio. Child, I don't remember that part. Oh, no. Yes, I do. When Phaedra was sitting there talking to Apollo, this interview with Kenya was okay. Um, the only things that stuck out for me was the relationship with her mom. I know that has to hurt her. Um, they touched on her and Mark, but I think, you know, she's going to speak more about it in the second part of this interview. And are we always going to have two part interviews? I need to know. All right. I understand as a YouTuber, you trying to get that check, Carlos. Anyway, guys, like, comment and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. We ain't selling out. We got money, but we ain't lending out. We got bars, but we ain't bailing out. In that pink Ferrari, we pillin'.